Okay, so here we are again, um, the end of day three of Microsoft Inspire, um, another full on day, um, another long day, uh, but another really good day. So today was the day that Satya stood up in front of us and it's always good value. Satya is a phenomenal speaker um, and uh, he didn't disappoint at all. Um, it was really interesting actually because we, we actually saw Satya um, showing us his own devices, his own experience of the of the Microsoft suite. Um, interestingly, showed us his uh, his iPhone, which he, he referred to as well. It's just another um, another 365 endpoint because there were all of his 365 apps, all of his Microsoft apps um, on his iPhone. Um, so a, a, another interesting one for us there. Um, one of the things that, again, we, I, I know we talked about this yesterday, the, the, there haven't been any massive announcements, but what we saw today is a huge number of iterations, a huge number of developments. Um, we, we were seeing things in teams like being able to transcribe a meeting um, on the fly, uh, to be able to record that meeting for, for people who can't attend, to be able to then add uh, subtitles to that meeting and to be able to search the video using the text which is again, you know, th these things are, cool. are, are, are yeah. really cool. Um, to be able to translate on the fly, to be able to translate again those those meetings. Um, so lots and lots of, of fantastic little stories, lots of lots of case studies. The one that stuck out for me um, was, okay, a big organization, but a very, very small little niche within that organization. A young guy from Heathrow who was, um, his, his dad had worked at Heathrow, he'd been, he'd been taken there as a kid. Um, he'd gone and worked there in security and he identified something that they were doing in security that was horribly inefficient. And he Google, he'd, he'd found power apps um, and he built his own power app. Yeah. It was and and he saved 11,000 sheets of paper and 288 hours of time by building this power app. It had then been picked up across the rest of the organization by the technology department. Um, the CTO had got involved and they've built, they've now built out 17 power apps um, as a result of that. And this is, this is some guy just, Incredible. just, you know, effectively homemade solution. Um, but that's the, that's the power of these tools now that they are, um, you don't need that technical, um, that technical know-how to be able to do things. You don't need to be able to code to be able to do things. So oh, that democratization it is, of ideas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Technology. And, and there were just, there were numerous stories like that. Um, and it takes me, you know, a lot of this takes me back to um, to a white paper that I wrote a while ago and uh, a video that I don't know whether it's available anymore. And I'm going to go and try and hunt it down um, called The Future of, of Productivity, which is which the first one that they did was in 2011. And actually, if you look at what's happening now and what's what's possible now, um, they, they predicted this. They, it, it feels like they knew where they were going. It's perhaps just taken a little longer to get there, but we are getting there. Um, and there is a lot of power in these tools. And again, the message is, if you're not already looking at these things, then, you know, get on board. Okay, great. So for, for me, uh, a few things, starting off with a couple of stats uh, that, that just stood out to me in Satya's speech and agree with Stephen completely. Uh, listening to Satya is, is always a, a joy. He's such an inspirational speaker, whether he's talking about technology or about, you know, um, saving the third world or whatever it happens to be. He's always, always got a great, great way of delivering uh, content. Uh, tech spending 5% of GDP uh, across the globe at the moment uh, is just a, fun, a phenomenal figure. Uh, I had no idea it was that high, but the, the staggering thing was it's predicted by most of the uh, most of the kind of analysts that that's going to grow to 10% by 2030. So shows this kind of idea that technology will be weaved into the fabric of everyday life, which again Satya talked about uh, in his in his uh, his core note today. Uh, he also he also kind of focused very heavily on privacy, and we know that's been a, a strong position for Microsoft for many years. And we had Brad talk about it uh, yesterday, but but privacy he he described as being a human right, and 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 we need to uh, start thinking about that as we're developing technology uh, across the whole piece. So he was very much pushing that down onto the technology companies like ourselves, as well as Microsoft's responsibility to do that and and influence governments to make sure that we, we all have privacy built into to, to, to data that we have stored, et cetera. So really interesting. Um, he mentioned some some more interesting stats. Uh, he said the data centers that they've got, 54 of them now, is is way more than the likes of uh, Google and, and, and AWS. 
but he mentioned that there's enough cable connecting those together to actually go to the moon and back three times, which I thought was quite a cool stat. But it's that idea that they're distributed. Yeah, yeah, Again, yeah, yeah. is a big, big thing for, for the customers. Uh, absolutely, and I think uh, part of that, he then moved on to talking about the, the sunk data center off, off the coast of Orkney, um, a really interesting project that they're running, completely self-sustainable uh, data center. If you haven't looked it up, uh, we we have written about that on previous blogs. Really, really interesting um, um, a bit of bit of technology, and, and as I say, completely self-sustained as well. So it uses wind and wave power. Um, very, very good technology, and obviously it uses natural cooling from yeah. from the seawater, which was the idea. But the part of the rest of the idea was actually putting it close to the people that want to consume it. So consuming those compute services rather than chucking them across cables, uh, it means you can put them just off the, the coast. And, and one of the stats that he, he went, he, he mentioned today was that 80% of the world population lives on the coast, which is again, it's quite a, an interesting stat, but by sinking data centers, it means they can put them closer to where the population actually needs them. And they don't have the risks of very long cables strung across uh, the Atlantic, for example, which I, which I mentioned yesterday. Uh, there was some incredible uh, AI use cases. Uh, there was there was patient outcomes for MRI scanners, things like the the analytics behind big data and how basically the, the they can um, the AIs can now massively help predict things like cancer from from MRI scans in a, in a much much shorter time scale, so it can improve patient outcomes dramatically. And then on the flip side of that, something which was really interesting around training of AIs for things like uh, robotics that were working in a warehouse, a distributed warehouse, a very, very expensive thing to do at the moment. But they've created this simulated environment which can train AIs on how to basically navigate the warehouse. And again, fantastic use cases. And they kind of showed some really cool videos around that in a product called uh, or a project called AirSim. And that, the other thing about that was it, 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 it's reduced it's a health and safety issue as well because it's reducing the need for materials handling by yeah. human beings. So you know it's yeah. taking out that that risk environment. Absolutely. And then 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 they kind of talked about uh, uh, some some of the demos, uh, uh, the the, the uh, real use case demos for for Hololens. And and we've we've seen these over over the last probably three or four uh, Inspires and WPCs. And there's more and more use cases all the time appearing. This one particularly stood out to me because it kind of fitted in with something we do. But in the example, they showed an, an electrician going out to a, a big sort of um, power uh, power sort of distribution box um, and then being remotely guided through what they needed to do and what they needed to change by someone more skilled in the office. Now, clearly, they were trained to do the basics, but they didn't have the skills to analyze what was wrong. Now, this person, they had the HoloLens ha headset on and the remote person was able to see exactly what they could see and was able to draw virtually draw on the on the on the virtual environment what they needed to open and where they needed to open it so really really clever technology and and I could see how you know roll that forward a few years and how we could be using that ourselves to help you know get get an engineer to site as quickly as possible who might not have all of the right skills to deliver that particular fix but how someone in the office highly skilled person could then help that person with a hololens headset to diagnose that particular fault and get people and, back in operational quicker. And this so is really all about that, that increase in, in, in the spend in tech mm. has to then deliver a, a, you know, a benefit. It's got to deliver, the growth in tech has got to deliver an equal, if not bigger growth in, in the rest yeah, of, of the, of yeah, the economy. Yeah, that, that's, that's the whole point, isn't yeah. it? And when, when you think about that use case, I remember seeing HoloLens demo the first time probably four years ago now. Um, and it, it was very much a flashy tool, uh, and it was yeah. very difficult to see the use case. The thing I, I really liked about that um, fault resolution, like you're saying, similar to what we do, you go mm -hmm. up to say you, you deal with something, phone someone, and get it sorted. Everything other than the hollow lens in that is available now. Mm -hmm. It was That's all true. driven by Dynamics 365. Mm -hmm. There was presence yeah. in there with yeah. Skype. Yeah, you he's know, doing the call. They were using teams. None, none of that was futuristic, it, which yeah. was no, actually no, really was reassuring. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and the last thing for me, just to kind of sign off on on this, was was um, one that I mean, we'll obviously write write a lot more about the, the stuff that we came across. But one of the things that stood out was um, the they, they prototyped a device which sat in the middle of a meeting room table. Uh, the guys put on a Hololens uh, headset, and again, basically, this guy appeared in 3D, sat at the table. And it, it, obviously, it's not been seen before. It looks a little bit rough around the edges at the moment. It has to be said, this is a this is a prototype, brand new device. But it shows that this, you know, this Star Trek vision of the future that we might have seen 10, 15 years ago is actually starting yeah. to appear now. So the ability to have a meeting room table, perhaps again, roll forward a few years' time when these devices are available and and they're getting better and better. 
we could we could see real meeting room tables with virtual people sat around those meeting room tables in 3D, and obviously the Hololens headsets will get smaller and they'll just become like glasses, and you'll just pop pop on a pair mm. of glasses and you'll be able to see each other as if you're sat at the table. It's coming, mm. and, it, and it was demonstrated today, and it's kind of very very early form, but it, it worked. It worked and really really well. And just beam themselves up and beam they? themselves <laughs> up when they're finished. Yeah, <laughs> means we can all work from home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a um, few things that stood out for me. Um, the uh, product announcements around Dynamics 365 um, were all very much about about breaking down walls between the different siloed products. So uh, linking in with Teams and having uh, you know, Power BI embedded within the fabric of D365. Um, already on the walk back, we're already thinking about how we can use that to improve our services internally uh, and then go and take that out to customers. So that that's great. Um, one of the other things, stats in there was that there's two billion first line workers, or front line workers, uh, out there uh, in the world that are largely kind of left behind a little bit in the whole digital transformation yeah. thing up until now. Um, and now that we're kind of sorting out the back office, the attention starting to turn to these guys and saying, right, well, let's try and keep them in sync with not only the, the data but the culture and, and making sure that that, yeah. that it's that it's one company, even with the guys out in the field. Um, and I, I just found that a fascinating number that you know there's plenty of opportunity to go and, and go and improve. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the um, going back to what I said yesterday, just around productivity and just trying to understand that a bit more, because again that's white space effectively. Um, the push that they've got around this modern life services that they that they launched today, um, with the lofty goal of of giving everyone back an hour a day uh, in the busy sort of digital and, and disconnected sort of lives that we lead. Um, it's something that appeals uh, certainly to, to us three, um, or we three, I should say. I did say it's just going to be another hour of work. It's just going to be another hour of work. It's going to be even more efficient. Yeah, but 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 the idea of you know having uh, your work life, your personal life synchronized in some way, uh, and then having that presented to you and having certain tasks automated so that you can choose what to do with that hour, whether you want to work in Excel or, or whether you want to go and spend it with the kids. Um, I just think that's really interesting that they're actually trying to address that because mm -hmm. uh, we said before that cons the consumer market is something that Microsoft have kind of been in and out a few times, mm -hmm. um, but that, that seems like a big push sort of back There's in. There's a definite drive back yeah. into that yeah. consumer market. Yeah. Well, that. yeah, without a doubt. And finally, the thing that I'm, I'm left with is the in the UK session, the, the story about Ben, um, just a, 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 a relatively young first-time father um, who had a, a, a son with a, a terrible injury when he was born, lost, lost his arm. Uh, and zero engineering background, uh, psychologist bought a, a, a Kinect uh, scanner um, imaging device for 20 quid, scanned his boy's arm, and then used 3D printing to to, to print him uh, a, 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 basically a cutting edge um, prosthetic yeah. device, and yeah. has, has improved his improved improved his life in the wind. Um, and I just thought, you know, for 60 quid in YouTube, mm -hmm. um, it's amazing how far yeah. we've come. You know, yeah, so that was yeah, incredible good. seeing that. Yeah, and it was it was quite a note to finish on really that that mm. that, that session this morning. So, mm. um, it's been full on. Um, it's been very busy. There's a huge amount more that we could talk about. We could talk about all the stuff that we could talk about some interesting new features that are in Excel. We can talk about some stuff that's in Outlook. That again, these just the the neat features. We could talk about the fact that you can now. Um, you'll now be able to sync your, your, your Android or your, your Apple phone up with your PC and you'll be able to send text from your PC. Mm -hmm. uh, the list is kind of endless yeah. and it, it comes back to this thing that um, it isn't now about big announcements, it's about iteration and it's also, I mean, I think one of the points Judson made um, was, you know, repetition is the mother of all learning. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to keep talking about these things. Um, we see them every day and um, we appreciate that our customers don't necessarily see them every day. So we do want to keep um, reinforcing these messages. Um, it isn't now about the big announcements. It's about the fact that these things are improving all the time. And that's that's, you know, that's the way the, the world is now. Um, but there's a phenomenal amount of exciting stuff happening. Um, and we'll we'll make sure that, you know, we we digest all of this. We bring it, bring it away, bring it back to the UK, get out of this bizarre environment that, that is Las Vegas. Um, 
and uh, we'll make sure we disseminate it out and make sure that you know all of our customers can can get the benefit from what we've seen mm -hmm. firsthand uh, over the last few days. Yeah, and if, if nothing else, uh, you know the freemium version of Teams. Even if you're not a three six five user at the moment, yeah. have a look at it. Yeah. it's available yeah. now. Uh, phenomenal product, and was demonstrated as a key component of many of the demonstrations yeah. that were shown uh, on stage and how all this stuff's coming together. C cultures, um, culture's been a massive thing that people have talked yeah. about. It's been a consistent theme and. And, and everybody seems to agree that the way that a cracking way to to, to get that um, culture built in your organization is through the use of teams. So, mm, cool. um, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right. Great. Time to sign off. Thank you very much. Thanks. Cheerio. Speak to you again soon.